Puss in Boots Once upon a time there was a poor miller who had three sons. When he died, he left his mill to the eldest son, his donkey to the second son, and his cat to the youngest son, Tom. Tom was very sad for he knew that his brothers could go into partnership and use the donkey to work the mill, but he felt that he had nothing. Maybe I could kill the cat and sell its fur, he said. The cat overheard Tom Arad cried, don't kill me, just give me what I ask and I will make your fortune. Tom was very surprised. What do you want? He asked. I'd like a pair of high boots, red leather, I think, said Puss, and a sack, and, if you can manage it, a hat with a feather. Tom laughed but he had nothing to lose. So he asked the shoemaker to make a fine pair of red leather boots for Puss. The cat was so pleased with the boots that he wore them all the time. Everyone called him Puss in Boots. Tom found him a hat and a sack as well. Next day, the cat put on his new blue hat with a long white feather, and, picking up his bag, went out into the fields. He put some lettuce and bran in the sack, then hid out of sight. It was not long before two silly rabbits found the food and Puss snared them in no time. Tossing his catch over his shoulder, Puss and Boots set off for the king's palace. He demanded to see the king at once and bowed low before his majesty. Your majesty, he said, I bring you a gift from my master, the Marquis of Caraba. And he gave the plump, juicy rabbits to the king for a week. The cat took presents of fish and game to the king and told him they were all gifts from the Marquis of Caraba, his master. Then one morning, by listening to all the talk at court, Puss learned that the king and his beautiful daughter were going for a drive beside the river the next day. Puss quickly worked out a plan to help his master. He ran back to Tom and told him to do exactly as he said. Go and bathe in the river tomorrow afternoon, and leave the rest to me. So. Next day, Tom was swimming in the river when he heard coach wheels coming along the road. Puss was there and he ran out to stop the coach. Help! Help! He cried, my master, the Marquis of Caraba is drowning. The king ordered the coach to stop and his footman helped Tom out of the water. Someone has stolen his clothes, wailed Puss, so the king ordered that a suit be brought from the palace. In fact, Crafty Puss had hidden Tom's clothes under a stone. The princess, when she saw this handsome young man, dressed in fine clothes, fell in love with him, and begged the king to let him ride in the coach. So Tom journeyed with the king Arid the beautiful princess, but Puss in Boots ran on ahead. In a field, Puss saw some reapers and said to them, King is on his way. When he asks you who owns these fields, tell him they belong to the Marquis of Caraba. If you don't you will be thrown into prison. When the king saw the reapers lie told the coachman to stop, and, leaning out of the window, asked the men to whom the fields belonged. The Marquis of Caraba, they told him, bowing low. Puss ran on and saw some men making a hay rick. The king is coming, he said, when he asks you whose rick you are making, tell him it belongs to the Marquis of Caraba. If you don't you will be thrown into prison. When the king saw the fine rick, rising golden against the sky, he asked whose it was, and was told that it belonged to the Marquis of Caraba. He was greatly impressed, for this young man must be very wealthy to own all this land, and have so many workers. Meanwhile, Puss had come to a fine castle on a hill. A fierce ogre lived here, erred everyone was afraid of him. In fact, it was he who really owned all the lands that the king was driving through. Puss in Boots asked to see him and told him that the king was on his way and was looking forward to meeting so great a landowner. The ogre was very flattered and asked Puss to sit down. I have heard so much about you, said Puss, but I am sure it is all lies. Hearing this, the ogre became very angry. Who dares to tell lies about me? He bellowed. Tell me what they say, tell me who they are, and I shall have them cut into tiny pieces. Truth to tell, Puss was a little scared, but there was no going back now. They say, he went on, leaning forward and speaking softly, that you can turn yourself into a lion. But I don't believe that rubbish, he said, twirling his hat. Rubbish is it? The ogre shouted, jumping to his feet. 
I can do anything. With that, he turned himself into a fierce lion which roared most dreadfully. Puss made himself sit still. After all, a lion was only a big cat, he told himself, a member of his own family. Very good, he said, but is it true that you can turn yourself into a small animal, a mouse for instance? The lion gave a low growl. There, I knew it was impossible, said Puss, they do tell lies about you. Nothing is impossible for me, roared the ogre, and still raging, he changed himself into a mouse. Puss caught him with one pounce and ate him up. Dusting his whiskers, he ran to the courtyard to greet the king for he had heard the coach clattering in. Welcome to the castle of the Marquis of Carabas, he said bowing low. The king and princess were delighted that the Marquis lived in such a fine castle, and Tom liked it too. Dinner is served, said Puss and they all sat clown to a great feast which had been prepared for the ogre. Tom asked the king for the princess's hand in marriage, and the king was very happy to let his daughter marry such a rich and handsome young man. They lived very happily at the castle for many years but Tom never told the princess that Puss in Boots had made him the Marquis of Carabas, for that was their secret. Puss had kept his promise and Tom was rich and happy. As for Puss in Boots, he lived in the castle too, but he never tried to catch another mouse. The taste of the ogre had been too horrible. The end.